The peace of Christ be with you all. And welcome one and all to uh, Southminster Presbyterian Church as we gather on this day after storms um, and get recombobulated. Um, for those that uh, may be coming to us digitally, I'm Pastor Christian. I'm here with Paula, Andrea, and uh, Sally back in the control booth, and of course the beautiful congregation of Southminster Presbyterian Church, and the fabulous bride and groom, the Bears, as we celebrate their anniversary today. Some really very fast announcements. Uh, for those that are here gathered uh, in your bulletin, you'll notice the uh, announcement sections. Uh, please note that we are having a congregational meeting on August the 22nd, and we will be in person as well as Zoom uh, at 1045. And the purpose of the congregational meeting is to elect our deacons, elders, and our pastor relations committee. Um, and then, of course, uh, kickoff Sunday is September 12th, and that day uh, we'll be back in the sanctuary, and that's when we will be installing our new deacons and elders to office. Please also note that Stephanie has now set her office hours. We at the staff are pretty much coming back full force into the office. She now has her scheduled hours of when she's working remotely as well as when she's here on premises. And then, of course, the whole next section is all about all the mission work that we're doing, all the good stuff around food and food insecurity and food justice, working with the Salvation Army and feeding the children, our weekly food pantry, and other good works. And we're always looking for volunteers uh, in those projects and initiatives. Here ends my, the announcements for the week, and so let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Please join me in our opening sentences and prayer of the day from Psalm 118 and Psalm 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in God. Grant us, O Lord, the grace always to do and think what accords with your purpose, that we who cannot exist without you may be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's unite our hearts and minds and sing together our opening hymn, The Rice of Life. Please join me in our prayer of reconciliation. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's grace, then let us confess our sins.
mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Our morning psalm is Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8, from the St. Helena Psalter. I will bless God at all times, and praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory, will glory in the Most High. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of God. Let us exalt God's name together. I saw it, and God answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon the Most High and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and God heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angels encompass those who fear God, and God will deliver them. Taste and see that God is good. Happy are they who trust in the Most High.
Let us pray. O oh God, graciously hear us, for we seek you alone. By your word and spirit, deliver us from our fears and terrors. Quiet us with the peace that passes understanding. And let us taste your goodness, which makes us radiant with joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning come from the Revised Common Lectionary, so we are sharing these readings with thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians all around the world. So as we break open and feast upon these scriptures, we are in communion with other Christians in this world. Our first reading is from the first book of Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 4 through 8. Elijah went into the desert a day's journey. He finally sat down under a solitary broom bush, and he longed for his own death, for he was being hunted as a prophet. He said, it's more than enough, Lord. Take my life, because I'm no better than my ancestors. He lay down and slept under the solitary broom bush. Then suddenly, a messenger tapped him and said to him, get up, eat something. And Elijah opened his eyes and saw flatbread baking on glowing coals and a jar of water right by his head. He ate and he drank, and then he went back to sleep. The mess Lord's messenger again returned and tapped him, saying, Get up! And the messenger said, Eat something, because you have a difficult road ahead of you. Elijah got up, ate, and drank and went refreshed by that food for 40 days and nights until he arrived at Horeb, God's mountain. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter, verses 35 and then verses 41 through 51. Listen now for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus said, I am, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now, after he had said this, the Jewish opposition grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they asked, isn't this Jesus, Joseph's son? whose mother and father we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus responded, don't grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by the Father who sent me, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one, who, who, no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. I assure you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that Whoever eats from it will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, 4th chapter, verse 25 through the 5th chapter, verse 2. Paul is reminding the church that is in conflict about what it means to grow and be a disciple of Jesus and that the unity that they have within Christ. And so he says, therefore, after you have gotten rid of lying, 
Each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor because we are parts of each other in the same body. Be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. Thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share with whoever is in need. Don't let any foul words come out of your meth, mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. Don't make the Holy Spirit of God unhappy. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other evil. Be kind. Be kind. Be compassionate. Be forgiving to each other. In the same way God forgave you in Christ. Therefore, imitate. Imitate God like dearly loved children. Live your life with love, following the example of Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. He was a sacrificial offering that smelled sweet to God. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Whenever I read this part in the book, the first book of Kings, about Elijah, and Elijah is, he's like the last prophet of God, and he knows that the king is after him, that he's, he's got a death warrant on his, on his back, you know, and, and people are hunting him down, and, and he's just exhausted. He is tired. He has gone through so much. From the moment that God called Elijah out to be a prophet, Elijah was always in the crosshairs, has always been laboring with great emotion and great passion, and nobody is listening. Elijah is seeing people suffer. He himself is suffering. He has seen so many deaths occurring. And yet God is telling him, tell the people, tell the people, tell the people, tell the king. And Elijah is saying, I'm doing it, but nobody is listening. Nobody is listening to your word of life. They rather die or kill those that are preaching your word of life, your way, O Lord. I'm done. I'm done. I'm exhausted as a prophet as a pastor of your people that clearly don't even want me nor you. And so Elijah is all frustrated. He's angry. He, and he goes out in the desert. He's just giving up. And kind of like Jonah, he just goes and he plops down underneath some shade. And he said, I'd rather just die here. Elijah's hangry. Hangry. That, that when you're hungry and you get angry, that's what I feel like so many times is when I'm, I'm hangry. I feel like Elijah. Like I can preach so, many, so much and I can just, you know, my face will get red and I get irritated about everything. And I need to go take a nap. Wake up, maybe, and eat something. And that's what God does here. God, God meets Elijah there in the desert. God meets Elijah in the midst of his frustration and his anger. God meets Elijah in the midst of all of this and says, have a Snickers bar. <laughs> I'm with you, Elijah. I'm not, I have not abandoned you. An angel of God, a messenger, has there and is preparing food for you has given you bread so that you can have life. Water so you're not thirsty. And take a nap again. Do some more self-care. And when you get up, you'll have a nice breakfast. Again, 
some good bread. Oh, good bread that's really soft and pillowy and hot. Nothing beats it. And apparently it helped Elijah because he didn't need any food for the next 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights. That holy number that we keep hearing in the Hebrew scriptures of the times of journey, the times of change, the 40 days and 40 nights when things change. And so Elijah, being fed by God, goes on a journey, and in the midst of the journey, he finds the strength that God has given him through the Holy Spirit and being fed, being fed spiritually and physically. For God is a God of abundance. God never lets us go hungry. God always provides for us in some way or another, even when we don't have the eyes to see it. Even when in the breaking of bread, we may not understand that it is God who is breaking the bread and feeding us, even if the person, a friend, is doing it, or a neighbor, or a community, providing some way in which people can have life, will not die spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, all the ways that we have life. God is always there in abundance. And it's just a matter of whether or not we can see. Sometimes we get so angry because we're so hungry and frustrated, we can't see God right in front of us. And then God breaks in and opens our eyes so that we can see and understand this journey, this holy journey that we are on as pilgrims of the way of Christ, the way of God. Today we continue diving deep as disciples of Jesus into the Gospel of John, the, the whole I Am the Bread of Life series that we're in. And each week, this whole section in John gets unfolded a little bit more and more and more. It's kind of like that angel of God is constantly waking us up each week during this series, like waking us up like the prophet Elijah and feeding us a little bit more so that we can be sustained on this journey. Jesus continues talking about the bread of heaven and the bread of life. And he says this most audacious, audacious claim. He says, I am. And now, remember, whenever Jesus says, I am, in the Gospel of John, that harkens us back to Moses. And you remember when Moses was on the mountain with the burning bush in the presence of God? You know, seeing God in the, in the, in the burning bush. Well, this is Jesus doing that, too, saying, I am. Just as God said, I am in the burning bush, God says, I am. That's a being word that's active. It is life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In rabbinical terms, you know, and rabbis love to use hyperbole. But, and you can read this, just like everything else he has said, I am the bread of life, I am the, the shepherd, or, and you know, the, the gate, the door. You know, he's not those things, but he is, symbolically. But the people that are listening to him, and they are getting frustrated and angry because I, I think they're all hangry too. They have not been fed for a while. And so when they hear Jesus, which they are already kind of skeptical about him because he's turning everything upside down, he's challenging religious leaders. He says, whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Boom, they're on him. They're not hearing what he's saying. They don't see what God is doing in front of them. And through Jesus, you know, God is saying, 
relax. I got you covered. You're a little frustrated and angry right now. Eat some bread. What I remember in this part with, with Jesus talking about how we need to eat of this bread of heaven, this, this presence of God, and, and taking and bring, as we talked last week about bringing in the presence of God into our lives so that we are at one with each other as we are at one with God. When Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven, whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That makes me think more and more about this beautiful gift from God, this sacrament, this holy act, this mystery. For in this moment, when Jesus says these words to this grumbling, complaining group, I'm reminded that God loves us so much that God wants to remind us that we are there, there with God constantly. That no matter what happens in our life, all of the pain and frustrations in this world, everything that we may be grieving, everything that may be causing our hearts to weep and the heart of God to weep, everything that we're experiencing that should be beating us down, and cause us to do and exclaim exactly what Elijah did, which was, take me now, O Lord, I can't stand it anymore. God, through Jesus Christ, is telling us, I am there to hold this pain with you at the same time that you can experience the grace and beauty and love of God in this world, to hold them together. For only in Christ can we hold pain and suffering with life and joy and find within pain the beautiful unfolding of God's redemption in the world. Just as Jesus hung on the cross, pierced, weeping, suffering, God redeemed that pain, just like God redeems our pain and suffering. And that symbol that the Romans thought would break the hearts and souls and spirits of the followers of Jesus became a symbol of life, salvation, and resurrection of new life and new creation. That's what happens when we are being held in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, when we are bound together through the Holy Spirit, through this sacrament of life. That no matter what happens, God is there. God feels our pain because we're at one, we're of one flesh. And God is redeeming every ounce of that into a moment of glory, a moment of new life. If we have the eyes to see it. We practice the sacrament of Holy Communion as we say in our the Presbyterian Book of Order in the Directory for Worship uh, when it talks about how often should we be celebrating this meal? How often should disciples be coming to the table of the Lord? And John Calvin and all the reformers as well as the early church fathers and mothers all said, you come to the table as often as you need to. In fact, at least once a week to remember and be reminded over and over and over that God is feeding us with life, being at one with us. Because during the week, I don't know about your week, but some of my weeks get to the point that I need to come to the table of Christ to be reminded of this love incarnate. And that Jesus gives his flesh and blood for our salvation. And it's in that remembering and in that 
act, that holy act, as we do it together as a body, gathering together as a community, gathering together as the body of Christ, that I am strengthened to do as Paul is teaching the church in Ephesus to be a living presence in this world, to recombobulate how I think and reframe my emotions so that I can be an acting presence, a Practice my theology by not letting sun set on my anger because I've been fed. To do good work, to not do it for my glory, but for God's glory. And of course, not to make the Holy Spirit unhappy. As I've said more than once, the Holy Spirit is like mama. Don't make mama unhappy. Be kind, compassionate, forgiving. We can only do that if Christ is at one with us and we intentionally are living our life in Christ and Christ in us. Friends, I say this every week. As disciples of Jesus, the world needs you. The world needs your presence The world needs to see you and see how you are living your life, how your life is intertwined with Christ's life. And even if we have a small circle of friends or just the people in the grocery store or at Target or wherever we're at, if you have been fed and are intentional about being at one and at, at one with Christ and with God and each other, then that transformation and work that the Spirit is doing shines through you. And you become a beacon for those around you. Because I know that somebody, a stranger, is going to see you. And there's just something about you. Just like all those that followed Jesus, when they saw Jesus, they said, there's something about him that I gotta go up and talk to him. There's something about him that there's something in my life that needs healing and if I just get close enough, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, that is you. The next time you're up pick and save, over by the vegetables, somebody's gonna kinda knock into you accidentally. Or there was just something in them that they were drawn to you because they see Jesus. And just being next to you, they can feel that invitation from the Holy Spirit to healing and wholeness and life. And just they just got to, I'm so sorry, I, I knocked into you trying to grab that tomato. <laughs> Friends, let us come to the table. Let us be nourished, let us be at one with one another, and let us find peace so that the world can find peace with us. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Please join me in our prayer of dedication and invitation. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Heaven and earth are yours, O Lord, and of your own we give you. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love to this one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south, east and west, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. For those of you that are at home, please at this time, if you have not done so already, set a table of the Lord before you with bread and cup, and then let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of the living and the dead, it is our joy to give you thanks and praise because though we are your rebellious creation, you love us and go to every length to bring us home to you. As your servant David's son, Absalom, was left hanging between heaven and earth, your son Jesus hung on the cross for our salvation. As the young man struck David's son and killed him, so Jesus, the son of David, had his spear thrust into his side. And as David cried, Would that I had died instead of you. We recall that in Christ, you did die instead of us, your wayward children. And so with humble, thankful hearts, we join the angels and archangels to sing the hymn of your endless glory. God, in Christ you send us the bread that comes down from heaven, and you promise that whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Sanctify your people that they may be marked with a seal for the day of redemption and be raised up on the last day. Send your Holy Spirit on this bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we proclaim the faith in which we were baptized. Trusting in, trusting in our loving and almighty God who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord God, we pray for the whole church. Sustain all who have tasted the bread of heaven and found solace in the promise of eternal life. Teach us to forgive one another in love and build each other up. Hear us, O God. Lord God, save and protect your creation. Feed, nourish, encourage all living creatures and teach us to practice faithful stewardship. Hear us, O God. 
Lord God, you rule the nations. Lead all people to speak truth and kindness to one another, walking in the paths of justice and peace. Hear us, O God. Lord God, we pray for those in need. Comfort those who mourn, encourage the fearful, and tend the sick. Hear us, O God. Lord God, we pray for those gathered here today. Feed us well so that the difficult journey of life may not be too much and sustain us through the times of trial. Hear us, O God. O Lord, you walk with us day and night, and we give you thanks for all of our companions in this journey of faith. We give thanks for all those celebrating their birthdays and those celebrating their anniversaries, especially wedding anniversaries like the Bears. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord God, we bless you for the lives of those faithful ones who have gone before us. Raise all at the last day that we may exalt your name together. Hear us, O God. Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as the Holy Spirit has lifted us up into the presence of God, into the presence of Christ, who is the host of this table, let us give our hearts eagerly and passionately to God and pour out the prayers that are on them, prayers for ourselves, our neighbor, and for the world, in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, you remember that night when our Lord was arrested, as well as all of those days after he rose from the dead. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples whom he called friends, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Eat, all of you, remembering me. Friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thanks be to God. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, remembering me. Friends, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. For as often as we eat of this bread and partake of this cup, we do proclaim the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. Come, let us sing our song to the Lamb. those of you that are at home, please now at this time partake of the bread and cup. And for those gathered here, Elder Edie and I will be out to you to provide the cup and the bread to you.
Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Let us sing together, bread of life, on thee we feed.
My friends, may you be nourished in this pilgrimage that you're on. May Christ always appear to you when you most need Christ to be there in your life. May that person or that word that you hear just when you need it, may you be fed by it and know that God loves you now and forever. That the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ It's yours now and forever. And the communion, the unity of the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, that even in the darkest and loneliest times, we are never alone. That's yours now and forever. And nothing can ever take this from you. Not even death. Alleluia. Amen. Let's go in love and serve in the name of Christ. And I'll see you next week.